Maria da Silva and Luis Guzman. Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez? Um, Sigflup has been an Australian Labour Party member of the Australian Senate, representing the state of Tasmania since August 2000. She comes from a family with a long labour tradition. Her grandmother was a founding member of the Hobart branch of the ALP, and her late uncle was a Tasmanian state ALP president. Luis Gonzalez is a Haitian... I don't even know what this says. <laughs> Agronomist? And founder of an environmental peasant movement. He received the Goldman Environmental Prize in 2005 for his work on forest protection. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thanks for coming. This is the last presentation. I'm glad you're coming, and after this you can all breathe a big sigh of relief and wait for block party. Uh, so, let me start a video. Hopefully it doesn't wig out on the, the size, but we'll see. First, please. Hey, nerd! Tired of playing with that old, dumb, 8-bit console? Uh-huh. We'll try putting some attitude into your console, dude! Sega Genesis with its 16-bit graphics and blast processing is here to show the other consoles who's boss. Sorry guys, but you can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does what Nintendo does. All right, round of applause for the Sega Genesis. How many, of, how many of you had this console uh, growing up? How many of you played the Sega Genesis? Can I see some hands? A good number of people, maybe 70% of people in the room. Many want to have the console now. Cool, we have a couple over there and one over here. Um, does anyone have a flash cart or something? Does anyone play ROMs on their the Sega Genesis? I'm sorry? You just say your ex oh, I see what you're saying. So it's kind of like a prize, sort of a treasure. She collects antique consoles. That's kind of an interesting concept. I don't know. Like, my thing with, with Sega Genesis and a lot of uh, newer, a lot of people collect antique consoles, but uh, a lot of things are emulated, you know? So you have run things on an emulator. And so you're, you want to play a ROM, you download a ROM, and you play it on an emulator. You don't burn it to, uh, you don't write it to a, a Flash or a ROM or anything like that and play it on a Sega Genesis. No one really does that. So you're, the hardware becomes an emulator. Uh, an emulator is in real hardware. It's a representation of what someone's opinion of what the hardware is. But that's what everyone runs. Then you have other emulators that are written, and when they write the emulators, I wrote a Nintendo emulator, and this is what I did. I looked to other emulators to write it. And so I wrote it based on other emulators, and it becomes this bizarre incestual sort of thing. Like that commercial isn't the Sega Genesis commercial. I found that on YouTube. And so it's, it's like someone representing, as they would in an emulator, uh, this Sega Genesis, whether it be its marketing or its commercials or or the actual hardware with something else. It's kind of a, a funny concept, and kind of a concept that you have to look out for when you start to program the Sega Genesis, because you may find that something will work in an emulator, it won't work on a Sega. Something will work in one emulator, it won't work, work in another emulator. We're all talking about something that's supposed to be static, right? But it's not, because no, no one uses emulators. I don't know, I think it's kind of a, kind of a weird concept, but we're going to skip the, 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 we're just going to go straight to the hardware pretty much and just talk about that on an emulator. Let me ex Randar this back because I figured it would do that.
So this is psychogenesis. It was complicated as fuck. And maybe if you took it and smashed it on the ground, this is what it would look like. But uh, you got your cartridge here, you got your controller, and your television. And you got like three main sort of areas that you can sort of make out there. Uh, the two of them are processors. We have two processors in the Sega Genesis, the 68K, the 68000. I like to say 68K. So whenever I say that, I mean the 68000. It's a 16 bits uh, processor with a lot of 32 bit instructions, uh, 16 bits data bus, um, just an overall pretty elite processor. Then we got the Z80, which is kind of a 16 bit processor too, 8 bit uh, data bus, a lot of 16 uh, bit registers and, and things like that. Uh, this is the 68K, this is the Z80. And then finally got this little guy here. Uh, this is the VDP, or the Video Display Processor, uh, which draws everything, so I attached the TV there. So every device here has memory associated with it. And uh, we're representing the memory in sort of a linear graph, uh, Y being highest ad uh, lowest address to high Y being the highest address. It's a memory map, and so we have two main memory maps, one for the Z80, uh, one for the 68K, and they are connected. So this is the 68K, as you can see by these squiggly lines here, it's connected to the Z80 memory, and it's a direct map to the memory. There's an area in the 68K memory that, if you write to it, you're addressing Z80 memory. Uh, you have to do funky things to do that, but basically that's what you do, and then you got VDP over here with three different memories, and the way you communicate to it is through registers, and the registers are represented in the 68K's memory uh, through a couple of addresses, uh, one for control, one for data. Uh, let me pull up some uh, bigger picture of the, of the 68K, and maybe you can see that in a little more deca detail. This is the 68K. I don't know if you remember the picture, but the top here was connected to Power Rangers. Not a cartridge I played, but a cartridge that is pretty big nonetheless. It could be as big as four megabytes. We have zero uh, through this address here is where the ROM is mapped onto the 68K. And for all intents and purposes, that's where the program starts. Uh, at the beginning of the memory, there's an interrupt table, and in that interrupt table, you are pointed to where to start. And it doesn't really work that way in hardware, because it actually runs a ROM, which checks to see if the word Sega is in a certain place in that ROM, so that if you change that, you violate some law that they can enforce, uh, some sort of trademark violation or something like that, so that's kind of how they, it's not a technological sort of, uh, Anti, this does not have the seal of quality control, but uh, well, the Nintendo, just sidetracking a little bit, the Nintendo, so I heard this earlier from the guy who melts chips. <laughs> Maybe he saw his, his, uh, his thing, but he's talking about how some of, the, um, some of the unsupported cartridges, like Bible Adventures for the Nintendo, the Nintendo had a little tiny 4-bit processor, like a microcontroller, one cartridge, one of the cartridge, one of the Nintendo talking to each other, uh, to negotiate, let's start the fucking thing because you're a legitimate cartridge. While the unlegitimate cartridges, like Bible Adventures, said fuck that and blew the chip up inside the Sega 